welcome to seed to life i hope you are doing well and keeping safe i try to grow my own veggies in my backyard but you know how important the beneficial insects are to have zero effort pollination my attempt is always to be self sufficient and like me i want my plants to be self sufficient as well we all know how beneficial insects and hummingbirds help in pollination and who doesn't want the mesmerizing hummingbirds in your garden after i started gardening as the number of plants rose in my garden the variety of insects also grew my backyard must be harboring hundreds of different insects it is always alive and that's what makes it even more beautiful beneficial insects save a lot of your work so that you get a bountiful harvest and that is why i like to have colorful flowers in my garden One such ornamental plant that is a great way to attract hummingbirds is cypress vine or hummingbird vine. Hummingbird vines also include trumpet vines that are also beautiful. But in today's episode we are going to talk specifically about growing cypress vines. In this video I'm going to share with you all about cypress vines, the history, claimed medical benefits, care requirements and harvesting seeds from it. So let's begin. Cypress vine is native to Central America. It grows in northern part of the South America, and the botanical name is Ipomoea comacillate. Cypress vines are called by different names in various countries and regions, but some of the common ones that you might know are cardinal creeper. hummingbird vine kunjalata cupid's flower and then there is this interesting name that i found is from el salvador and it is corona yes corona probably because of its star like shape but it is interesting to know cypress vine is actually not edible in fact it is mildly poisonous The seeds contain toxins that can cause hallucinations, dilated pupils, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, drowsiness, numbness of extremities and muscle tightness. Possibly because of this these cytotoxic effects, the cypress vine is believed to be useful in treating different types of cancers like colon, breast, cervical and nasopharyngeal cancers. Other than this, cypress vine is also part of various traditional folk and ancient medicine. Poultices of the leaves are used to treat hemorrhoids. In Siddha medicine, decoction of the leaves was used to treat fever, diabetes, physical weakness, abnormal behavior, sinking of voice and bleeding from wounds. In Thai traditional medicine, the leaves are believed to be useful for snake bites and bloody cough. It looks like the plant has a lot of hidden potential that still needs to be discovered more. In normal home gardens, it is mostly grown as an ornamental plant because of its beautiful star-shaped, bright-colored flowers and delicate fern-like leaves. The flowers attract various beneficial insects and hummingbirds, and that is why it is called as hummingbird vine. There is one more vine that is also referred to as hummingbird vine, and that is trumpet vine. that produces beautiful orange colored bell shaped flowers and these flowers of the trumpet vine are much bigger even though they are from the same family now i want to share with you how this beauty came to my garden the propagation of these plants occur mainly through seeds that are tiny maybe One day, one such tiny seed decided to take a ride with the wind and landed in my dragon fruit pot. And my dragon fruit, like a gentleman, welcomed this in uninvited guest with a big heart. Cypress vine is not a choosy plant. It adapts to varying climates and the dragon fruit pot was perfect for it. They both come from tropics so they get along well. I call them the best couple in my yard because they both complement each other so well. Thorny dragon fruit looks even more beautiful when the hummingbird vine twines around it. The thorns become almost invisible and the cypress vine gets support from the sturdy dragon fruit. And that is how their friendship began. 
and that actually can be a problem in some regions. It is considered as an invasive species that means a weed in warm regions like Australia and in southern states of the United States. In my state too it is classified as a weed. So while growing these plants you have to be careful to prevent self seeding. Cypress vine is not frost tolerant and grows well in hot climate. Once the temperature starts going down below 60 degrees Fahrenheit or 16 degrees Celsius, it struggles and leaves look yellowish. You can start the seeds indoor in late winter near the end of the frost period or you can directly sow them outside in early spring. You can sow the seeds about half inch deep to prevent drying. The seeds need to be kept moist during germination. Make sure that the soil is not soggy to prevent rotting of these seeds. The germination time can be from 1 to 3 weeks. And once these little wonders sprout, there is no stopping for them. As long as the temperature stays at least above 60 degrees Fahrenheit. They grow rapidly in summer and they can withstand high temperatures. Based on my observation, cypress vines are not very picky. They adapt easily to different types of soils and that makes them one of the easiest plants to grow. You can feed them regularly with all-purpose fertilizers to get more flowers. Cypress can grow in height between 6 to 15 feet. It also grows and wraps around the neighboring plants for support. All the stems including main stem are very slender and the leaves are pointy or thready, almost thready actually. It is necessary to give the vines proper support and keep guiding them to keep them contained. Cypress plants do not require a lot of soil and they can grow well even in small containers. You can plant them along with other ornamental plants as well but then they will squeeze them by wrapping around the stems. You can also plant them in hanging pots. These plants do not attract many pests, maybe because they attract the beneficial insects, they take care of the pests too. However, if you still have pest trouble like aphids or spider mites, then you can always spray them down using water hose or organic pesticide spray like neem oil spray. In a couple of months after planting, you can expect the small buds appearing on the plant. The blooming period is between June to September, depending on when the summer starts in your region or how long it lasts. If the temperature in your part doesn't fluctuate much, then you can even grow it as a perennial, but otherwise it is mostly annual, that means it grows every year and dies in winter. It is hardy in zones 11 and 12. Cypress flowers come in three different colors, red, white and sometimes pink. The plant that I have produces only red flowers. The flowers are not fragrant but they are very attractive. They are about a centimeter in diameter and have 5 petals. Pollination occurs without any hassle. Beneficial insects and hummingbirds do their job perfectly and leave you a ton of seeds. As the flowers dry, the ovaries start bulging into seed pods. At first they are green in color and then they turn light brown. Each seed pod stores 4 seeds inside. I opened multiple seed pods and noticed only 4 seed seeds in each pod. I was actually expecting 5 since it has 5 petals but maybe that is how these flowers are designed by the nature. Now let's see how to harvest the seeds. Like sesame seeds where if you have the pods on the plant for a long time to dry, they just break open and the seeds fall down. Cypress seeds also spread easily when the pods dry. You can pick the seeds when they start turning brown and dry them in a small dish. In a week the seeds dry completely and then you can save them in a ziplock bag or in airtight container and save them in a cool dry place until you are ready to plant them again. And that's all I know about these plants. I hope you find this video useful. If you want some more information about these plants, I'm putting some reference links in the description box. A big thanks to you for watching my videos and supporting my channel Seed to Life. 
please click subscribe for more such videos and updates. Click the bell icon to get notified about future videos. And feel free to reach out to me through comments, Facebook, Twitter or Instagram if you have any questions. I am posting the links in the description. I would love to hear your suggestions and would like to know the news of your garden. Happy gardening. Thank you again. See you soon.